right, I let it go just a little bit for you, Mr. Palmer. You're all nice and spiffy today. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. I'm thinking 21 seconds is a good a good intro for the for the music because it. I've I, I've got some other stuff I've I've kind of cooked up and I'm not uh, I'm not bringing it out just yet. We're I've got some oh, ideas. Okay. <laughs> I might have to take a page out of another show and and have the music play a little bit longer in the background. It's softer, more. Uh, yeah. Anyways, we're not going there. It's a, it's a friendly podcast, not a. You know. You know, if we had some AI on our podcast, that could probably handle that for us. I think it could replace me. Hey, well, I don't know if AI could replace you. Well, I mean, that's not hard, right? Well, I mean, but at this point, AI is just going to replace everything. I mean, quite honestly, we could take the week off and let chat GBT do our our hosting you know, duties and, and then AI just replaces all of us. Well, right? I mean, in that case, just if our, our robot overlords are listening, I've loved you from the day one. <laughs> just keep that in mind when, when you place me into servitude. Um. <laughs> Because everything's better with AI, right? Yes, everything's better with AI. So, speaking of AI, because oh, well, you know what? You know what we? You know, I just thought of it, John. I should have brought my mm. little baseball clicker that I use for my pitch counter, and we could count how many times we say AI this episode. So, what you're saying? It's probably a good thing we're not making this into a drinking game. Oh, we would kill people. <laughs> oh, we might have, might have to edit that out, but um. <laughs> I'll yeah, use AI a, for that. AI? Okay. <laughs> so to, See, to celebrate. to get us off the rails. Yeah, oh, no, it doesn't. What, are, what, we're two and a half minutes in? Already off the rails. Um, So to bring us back on the rails, we're going to use some AI to talk about AI. And we're going to um, bring in another person to talk about AI. And I, this is the second time we've had him on with us i believe okay. <laughs> but we have to because he's my boss and so we're bringing back middle perec um and to because um he's got some ai stuff because he's big into ai and every time we have a team meeting we usually end up talking about ai so it was like well let's talk about ai so middle um welcome back to the show thank you jim and <laughs> dude, first things first as soon as you introduce me as your boss Suddenly, everybody listening is like, okay, we can fast forward to the last music because it's Jim doing this for pleasing me. Well, let's make sure that they get value out of this one, okay? Well, let's be honest. John and I are here, so they've given up on the value part a long time ago. So it's, <laughs> they are, our, our listeners are here. Some audience. Well, yeah, but are they really here for us or the AI? <laughs> well, fair enough. Click. We'll have to, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to do an audience <laughs> survey at some point. Use my pen for my clicker. Here we go. <laughs> You're gonna break the pen. I, oh, so anyways, so, yeah. <laughs> so middle. Um, I think last time we had you on, we were talking about the evolution of Ruckus Cloud to Ruckus One, okay. and. Before we like, well, before we, the music, the intro music, we were chatting. And one of the things that we were sort of chatting about was sort of AI. And I believe that AI has really gotten an unfair shake and also a fair shake. So a long time ago, when we first hear, heard about AI, I think, you know, it was like, might've been a little too soon, but it was a hot buzzword. Um, and the buzzwordiness of AI is still around, but I believe that just like Ruckus Cloud evolving into Ruckus um, One, I believe that recently, and I kind of refer to that with the chat GPT stuff, AI has really kind of gone through its own evolution or revolution, if you will. Um, and you, like I alluded to on our team calls, you talk about AI a lot. So <laughs> for our listeners here, um, why... Why is it that you are all of a sudden and, and our team calls and on here really, you know, why is AI now the thing, you know, the, the, now the, why the, well, how does it apply to networks and, and stuff like that? Because that is something you've been championing, championing. That's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get one big word in per episode. It's in the contract. Fair enough. <laughs> Wait, so, we had a contract? <laughs> you signed it. You just didn't know it. I mean, I think your AI version signed it. Yeah. 
I was definitely <laughs> somewhere for that. Anyway. Yeah, okay. So, so here's the thing, Jim. Uh, you rightly say, right, that I or we discuss AI a whole lot in our team meetings and for the right reason. Yes, there was a time when everybody used to pay lip service to AI, but I'm going to tell you a few things where you will be convinced that for network management, I think AI is becoming slowly, but for sure, a de facto standard. As in it is, the, you, you just can't get, uh, get away from AI. It's increasingly important for uh, network management for today and, and many reasons. So as you know, I always write my even in my emails in bullet list, bulleted fashion. So of course, I'm going to come up with a couple of bullets and uh, lo and behold, as I started thinking about it, I came up with one dozen, 12 things. It just caught my attention that this is why now is the time for AI in network management. So I'm going to pause just a bit. Yes, a one dozen, right? We've been chatting about it in team calls and what have you. But when you put all those together, I bet the listener right now or all your listeners, they'll have probably two more of their own, making it 14 or even uh, 18 and 20, right? I'm just going to rattle off 12 of those. So if you are ready, with your permission. So, so hit us. What do you Excellent. got? All right. So let's talk about the complexity of modern networks, right? So today's networks, whether they are wired, wireless, as in Wi-Fi, I'm not even referring to uh, the fancy IoT. And uh, now we are already on the verge of, we are actually ex not even exploring. We are already in the world of uh, 5G as well, right? The, the whole, when you put all these access networks together, and delivering the end user experience. It has gone incredibly complex, right? They, so there are now more users, more applications, more devices, so more of everything. Let's park that for a moment, right? I've never heard IT getting more people, IT getting uh, bigger and bulkier. It is all about IT is getting leaner, okay? You talk about complexity from the perspective of service level agreement. For a while, if IT kept Wi-Fi humming, that was good enough. Now, suddenly, they are subject to service level agreements, right? They are chasing KPIs, right? And last but not the least, as I mentioned, uh, previously, it was uh, Wi-Fi and uh, switches at the back. And there you go. That was your network. But now the network, uh, access networks, there are more of them at play. So imagine, let, let's just pause. This is the biggest reason for uh, AI because the networks, networks are complex. Now let's play this out. The second one, big one, equally big, is need for real-time monitoring, analysis, and analytics, right? It was very easy when we only had like a dedicated group just looking at Wi-Fi and looking at all those things. And of course, there were no SLAs. So if it was working, don't touch it, nothing to measure. But suddenly, continuous monitoring of network traffic, network performance, right? Even identifying anomalies and issues as they occur, right? It's not that they are just going to make a report out of it. This is about this is not about driving your car, looking at rear view mirror. This is looking through windshield and making sure that proactively avoid you avoid accidents, right? This real-time analysis must allow for proactive resolution. That's is, this is important, right? Proactive, predictive resolution that reduces downtime and ensures seamless experience. So that's the second big reason, which is a need for monitoring, analysis, and analytics. So, so yeah, I, I want to cut you off because I got a question. Yes. And I was thinking as you were talking about it, you know, because again, it's one of those things where we go, hey, hey, AI, AI, AI. Right. But when we talk about real-time monitoring and analytics, and I kind of liked your example of you know driving the car using nothing but the rearview mirror, um, but are you um, is, are you getting to the point of you're saying you're like my wife, who starts screaming at me when you know I'm looking in the rearview mirror and she starts screaming at me, telling me to stop because the car that's 300 feet in front of me is you know has the brake lights on. I mean, is it is that 
kind of where AI is going with the, because I mean, when you think about it, it's like monitoring and analysis and analytics. I mean, how does AI help us with that? Or is it going to be my wife sitting in the passenger seat, screaming at me saying I'm a bad driver? You know I mean? How does, I mean, can you, I, Sure. I mean, well, can you give me a little bit more on this because it's just, it's just Absolutely. interesting that it's so high up in your list. So let, let that goes to my reason number three. And look, oh, okay, not, sorry. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm not going to comment on uh, the the lovely relation between you and your wife and how she screams, but I am going to tell you a whole lot more about uh, how AI relates to everything okay. I just right. All right. So. So let's understand one thing, that AI plays a role in ensuring that your incidents do not become service affecting. What does that mean is that, yes, the car in front of you is stalled or it breaks, right? And you are still going at that high speed. Is there uh, is that mechanism in your car that stops your car before you hit the car in front of you? Okay, simple English. So what other means than my wife? <laughs> uh, well, we are not going there, sir. So let's I'm bring. I'm guessing the that Jim's wife is not a listener. Yeah, yeah. No, I, she's not. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? If this happens, I will get more of Jim's time, and I'm always happy to take that. You see where I'm going with it. So, so let's keep it focused, right? So okay, AI, sorry. AI-driven analytics. So it's all about proactively avoiding incidents from becoming service affecting, right? The, this enables network administrator to address issues before they impact all those users, applications, devices, before it affects those SLAs that are imposed upon them, right? You, it, there is, and and let, let's do this. Park this reason number three for a moment, and then I will tell you uh, more about it Right. Once I've exhausted my one dozen list, because, uh, you know, uh, painstakingly, I went through for hours to enlist these for you. Let's make sure at least our readers get get a taste of this. The fourth one, Jim, I'll tell you, is security. AI is look, look think about it. Right. For a while, you were keeping an eye on only one sheep in a herd. And, and you're just perfectly OK. Right? If sheep misbehaved, you knew. Now, suddenly you have a herd of sheep, you have a couple of horses, you have cows and uh, goats, all those things, right? Are you able to keep a close eye on anybody misbehaving or any prey coming in and just uh, taking away one of your animal? All these things are pretty difficult, right? It's security. So AI plays a crucial role in keeping an eye. Think of it as your 24 by 7 by 365 surveillance camera, right? Is that... So AI, and, and now I'm going to venture into a little bit more of a flavor of AI, so to speak, is like machine learning algorithms, right? They can detect and respond to security threats in real time. They are very good in detecting anomalies, right? They can see, aha, I see a very abnormal behavior. You never taught me, you never told me about it, but I see something. It's very difficult for IT administrator to identify that abnormality right, when they have so many things to deal with. Identifying patterns of behavior that may indicate an attack, that is important, right? The, so AI helps in uh, identifying these evolving threats and they are soon getting smarter in updating the defense mechanism as well, right? They uh, AI could very well come and tell you that, Jim, I think you should be changing your configuration this way so that that particular thing doesn't happen again. Let's pause for a minute, right? IT gets that level of help because of artificial intelligence, right? So uh, I think there is there is value to it, right? This is where AI, and uh, why now, it's justifying its uh, existence in network management. Another thing comes to my mind is uh, quality of service, right? is are you able to auto automatically as in no it doesn't have to know everything all the time but imagine you are the ceo or ceo of an enterprise or principal of a school or a dean of a university right or that that upper echelon of uh, patrons at a high end resort right am i able to continuously keep an eye on your usage 
and and then identify that haha i need to prioritize certain applications certain services right ensuring that they receive certain necessary bandwidth i i'll go even all out and say that look if this is a hospital and there are certain class of devices right that it hasn't classified well somebody came and plugged it in but are you now able to identify based on the usage pattern that aha these devices need their own swim lane for a, for uh, the lack of better word right being able to deliver that quality of service is very essential and simple things like video conferencing for if you have a board of directors meeting are you able to sense that and deliver that qos see think now all whenever you talk about ai think about how well it would have been able to do on their own right without such a help what all tooling what all facilities would they need in order to deliver the same end user experience right no so but all the automation sounds great and i'm sitting here thinking okay i'm going to put ai in my network right okay. And I'm going to get to to get a nice comfy chair. I'm going to ask my boss for a comfy chair. I'm going to keep my feet up. I'm going to actually get some downtime. You know, <laughs> go on to the days of the 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. But on the flip side, I've seen those movies where AI takes over. <laughs> and as a network administrator, what terrifies me, and I've, I've heard this from customers before as well, and it, it comes up in circles. What, I mean, we we definitely need to make sure there's, there's fail safes because there's, changes that AI would see to make yeah. that we would explicitly not want made. And I was actually just talking to Jim on the side about this. Uh, it reminds me of a day back when I used to work and supporting uh, uh, telecom, private uh, branch exchange systems. There was a setting, and I worked on an Avaya system at the time, um, mm -hmm. and I'm sure other ones had it, where if your T1 circuit went down, mm -hmm. it could auto recover, it could flip over to the backup, it could do a couple of different things but if you had a flapping link condition, you didn't want to do anything to that. And AI would have just automatically flipped over and you'd actually wind up causing more pain to your call center or your customer network or whatever it is. And it's one of those things where literally the first thing you did when you configured that new circuit was to turn that off. And you know the manager would always be like, why are you turning that off? It's going to save us. I said, no, I want to get called when that circuit's up because it might look like it's back up but your ISP might be doing maintenance on it still, and it's briefly recovered, but it's going to go down about 100 more times before they call you and say, all clear. Cool. So that's my fears. Like, I, I I love the idea that AI could make, um, and I know you've got some of it coming up and, and some of you already touched on in terms of, like, those quick hit decisions, security related. We know how fast these attacks are happening in real time and things like that. But there's that, like, and again, my apologies to the robot overlords, but... We can't go too far, I think. I don't think, and this is, I don't know, maybe this is me, the skeptic, but AI is not going to replace a network engineer. To me, AI is a force multiplier. AI I should be lean. agree. I 100% I agree and some more. So so let's unpack you. Uh, and uh, so for my viewers or listeners, uh, John Deegan is an SE. He's a techie. And he always worries that, geez, what if AI took my role? And I can assure you that, no, it's not going to take your role. It's In fact, it's going to make you much smarter. So let me let me tell you a couple of points here, right? Uh, first and foremost is that whenever an, an enterprise deploys AI system, right, for the network, network management, one of the things they should be looking for is that, is this system smart enough to give me Mr. IT opportunity to turn off few things, right? AI is AI. It's going to show you all sorts of, so to speak, anomalies, right? Or these incidents, so to speak. You as an IT, you know certain things in your network. You don't want to see it. First and foremost, simple things. Can I just mute those? I don't want to see it because I know it, right? Second piece, AI is not going to uh, do your job for you in terms of just uh, make that change and say, hey, keep drinking what you're drinking. No, the beauty of AI is to bring to you a uh, ready-made cake. All you got to do is eat. And what that means is AI should be smart enough to identify and provide you with recommendations, right? What we call it semi-autonomous networking as to IT still should, I believe, remain in charge of saying, aha, this recommendation makes sense. I'm going to put it in, accept the suggestion, right? That what does it mean? 
that it the power still res resides in the hands of IT. This is we are talking about 2023. And I assure you both that things will change in the due course of time. But for now, that's the right approach. And the third one, John, nobody is running away after accepting those changes. So if your AI system is not keeping a close eye after IT has accepted those changes, then you probably got to question about that AI system, right? You want to have AI smart enough to say, you know what, I propose these changes, John accepted it, I'm going to still keep a, an eye on it. John forgot about it, but I'm going to keep an eye. I'm going to take stock of current KPIs. I'm going to see how those KPIs, key performance indicators are changing. And look, technology is technology, right? Things happen. So if that change doesn't pan out, AI should be smart enough to say, aha, Jim or John, I goofed up. I'm going to roll myself back, right? See, I'm giving you or our listeners tools on even how to evaluate an AI system if they are giving it a thought, right? They should keep an eye on is it able to offer these features or, or these facilities? And that's one of my favorite features in RA, to be honest. And I know that's using AI and ML, and it's a shameless plug, but it's not shameless because it is a ruckus <laughs> podcast. But like, so that's, to me, that's the best use case, not just the force multiplier, but looking at things like, I mean, I know I've done this before with, with, uh, metrics where I'm doing like side by side comparisons. Cause I'm, I know Excel, but I'm terrible at doing like pivot tables and things like that. Um, and I know that, that that kind of automation and scripting makes things a lot easier, but you look at what AI can do with that. And you look at what a tool like Ruckus Analytics does with that. And specifically like it recommends a change, which it will do. And it will show you when you made the change. And then it shows you whether that change actually had the desired impact. Yes. So you don't sit there and go, I think it's good. And nobody's called me to say anything's broken. Right. You can literally look at that section of the screen and it says these X, Y, and Z metrics are demonstrably better or worse from the time of that change. And then you as an engineer get to say, do I let it burn a little bit more? Or is that enough for me to say it's good or let's roll it back or we've got to change something else? Before you were just basically, I mean, one of the measurements was, hey, do we have any help desk calls about this? Anybody call me coming screaming? That's not a really good metric, but I mean, you know, that was usually the old oh. adage was if nobody's coming running down the hall screaming, then you probably didn't break anything. But, you know, middle brings up a good point, though. And I'm not sorry to cut you off, John. No, um, no. I was done. <laughs> uh, but he brings up a good point, you know, because he was talking about, you know, like, like people forgetting. Right. And let's be honest, the older we get, sometimes we forget stuff. You know, the joke about walking into a room and forgetting why you were there or looking for your glasses and they're on your head, right? And so, you know, it brings up a good point because I've done things a lot of time and who who among us hasn't, where we've, we've set something up because it's like, oh, you know what? We're not using that room anymore. So we're going to turn it off. We're gonna turn something off. We're gonna make a change. We're gonna make a configuration change. Like this morning, I unplugged a fiber uplink, you know, to one of my switches, not realizing that my NAS server had been relocated and was feeding off of that switch. And so my wife called me getting angry. And so, you know, I think that's a, a middle, can you go kind of go into those, into some of those other use cases and expand on that about the, you know, forgetting things or, or getting things done or, or helping us sort of as mm -hmm. we get older and things are more complex, how oh. does AI, you know, sort of help us with that kind of stuff? So either you are reading my notes or you are reading my mind or uh, your uh, loving relation with your wife is bringing all this out, whichever way we want to look at it. But uh, the next one uh, that's on my list is uh, capacity planning and resource allocation. So hear this out, right? As you mentioned, we get uh, as we get older, we tend to forget. Uh, I think it's not as grim as that, but imagine AI being able to tell you, Mr. IT, right, is that, uh, Simple things, right? Is 
I'm going to dynamically allocate resources based on the demand. Let's start with this one. You forgot to turn on or make something available for a given event or a meeting or some testing in the school or what have you. Is this AI system smart enough to say, I see something happening in here and this looks important. I'm going to carve out bandwidth for these mission critical applications, right? And try to shift load from uh, 4K videos to this particular thing. That's a very simple use case, which is where you are allocating resources and AI is smart enough to identify, no, it's not rules-based engine, right? On the other hand, so many times that if IT is managing a huge infrastructure, they don't have any idea on how the resources are being consumed, right? AI is there where the AI is going to keep a close eye on how every network element is being put to use and give you an assessment that says, you know, did you know that in the past 30 days, right, these four huge conference rooms or meeting rooms, for the example, or in the last, last six months, nobody has ever connected to these APs in these areas. I make this is a more simplified version of it, right? What how does that help IT? First and foremost, right? is, uh, and I, I'm going to touch upon that one, but I'll, I'll tell you beforehand, is energy efficiency. Very simple. At the same time, when it's upgrade, time to upgrade or time to refresh, you precisely know what uh, infrastructure do you need at the time of your refresh, right? Believe me, with this uh, proliferation of users, applications, devices, focus on SLAs, with IT getting thinner and thinner and more access networks at play, it's getting difficult for them to keep an eye on sizing their uh, infrastructure the right way or being able to allocate resources for mission critical applications, right? It's not easy. And uh, thanks, AI is helping them. Now, that brings up a good question. I, I touched upon it just a bit, energy efficiency, right? Imagine that... AI, and, and this is again, not about school that uh, shuts down operations at 5 p.m. and nothing happens till eight. It's very easy, five to eight, don't, don't show me anything. It's simple, right? Uh, IT can definitely do it. Let's give credit to IT and engineers as and where due. But uh, dynamically, if AI senses that, aha, I do not see anything happening in here, do I, uh, do I just put these in low power mode? Right, just simple use case, and and it gets ser more serious after that. You know what law or of large numbers is at play here? If it's just one AP or two APs, a uh, couple of cents here or that wouldn't uh, you wouldn't mind. But when you are talking about a large installation, uh, it does matter. Energy efficient uh, uh, devices, energy efficient infrastructure on the heels of AI, and as the AI costs are going down, right. Uh, AI uh, from the perspective of compute storage and networking, uh, these these savings now look pretty handsome. You are not saving pennies while spending pounds. Now the equation is getting a little more balanced, right? And that brings me into a big topic of cost reduction. Believe me, nobody likes to talk about it, right? As soon as I say AI can help IT with cost reduction, the first thing is like, am I going to lose my job? And the thought process here is not to lose your job. The thought process is about improving efficiency, right? So uh, let's let's talk about how does the cost go down, right? Right now, if IT were to do everything by themselves, right? And cost comes from a variety of things. The time that we IT burns, the subject matter expert time, SME time, that's also a cost. Imagine if you are able to save an hour here or hour there in a in a typical IT day for an SME. That's the cost that you reduce from a given daily manual bland operation that can be redirected, rechanneled to something more strategic, right? Lot more to unpack there. Uh, essential to say and convey here that cost, it's not about firing any employee. It's about reducing cost on things those are that that can be handled by ai right now 
the, the next one that was on my mind was more and more complex technologies are being deployed, are constantly entering uh, your uh, uh, enterprises, right? Uh, as latest as uh, six gigahertz. <laughs> we all talk about this, what, six hours out of eight hours of work every day, right? Six gigahertz, this six gigahertz, that. And uh, you probably both are tech more technical than I am, but we all know that uh, simple things like channel planning, right? Talk about uh, planning channel from channel, channel width and transmit power, right? There was a time where 2.4, there were only three non-overlapping channels. Uh, IT, you know, you both probably did it, the channel planning with a pen and a pencil, right? Or pencil and a paper. And you did it by hand, maybe uh, a nice uh, ruler and you drew some tables and you got done. Try no, doing we use, we used we use solo cups. See? Yeah. And they Any were nice more? because they were dual band because you had the small circle and the big circle, you know, the mm -hmm. bottom of the cup and the top of the cup. So yeah, yeah. we we use solo cups, but I so, they still do, but this, this but this raises an interesting thought, right? And this is and Jim and I know this, and especially as you go to any of the Wi Fi conferences, I mean this is literally like these are fighting words. Because and I mean I learned it from the minute I got into Wi Fi. You've got the side of the house that wants to do all static channel plan mm -hmm. and the side of the house and it's been in, in tools, whether you want to call it AI driven or not, it's been in tools from all sorts of different vendors for years now where you can click a button and use the magic wand and it'll auto do channel plan. Um, and that's not even to get into the fact that like you look into our product and most other enterprise controllers and you've got automated radio resource management that does that for you. You literally flick the setting on and it's going to move the APs around based on a number of different factors. So it's, it's almost like, I don't want to go say it's like a religious fight, but Having been around some of these debates, it gets really intense because there are, are people, even today, even in 2023 and projects that I've been involved with, that on a two, 3,000 AP deployment prefer to do static. Um, wow. my, my one feeling on this, and it's, it's sort of, I don't want to say AI in this case might make an engineer less sharp, mm -hmm. but there's definitely that feeling from some of the old school engineers. There's almost like a condescension they look at uh, some of the newer folks that only use the auto channel plan. And, and to me, it's kind of like, well, I'll, I'll take a, a page out of the ham radio book, right, Jim? I never had to learn Morse code to get my license. I could have, I didn't. And now with apps and, and all the other stuff, nobody uses Morse code. It, it's one of those things where like, if, if all the technology continues to prove, they don't need to use it anymore. But then when the technology breaks, even for a little bit, Mm -hmm. What happens? I mean, it's like the, my kids nowadays with calculators, they can't do math as quickly as we can because in, you know, the the last century when we were in school, you had to. There wasn't, you, you didn't have a calculator in class. You had to learn how to do all of this in your head. And we go and do math yeah. and I'm like, I'm just rattling off in my head. And they're like, how'd you do that? Let me, let, but let me throw in something else. You mentioned the ham radio stuff, right? I tried to learn Morris code. I failed horribly bad. So, you know, so it's not just, it's, you know, it's, and I was talking to a group of people earlier today before this, this, we were recorded this and, you know, it's like, it's like, it's not that people are ignorant or people are dumb or anything else like that. It's, it's just that some of us are better at this than others. And so when you start talking about, I think middle's going to go there here in a second, we start talking about AI, it's, it's, the, and it, it goes back to your force multiplier thing, right? it sort of levels that playing field. It gets people back up and, you know, it sort of does all that stuff for us. So it's not, I don't think it's a matter of, you you, you know, yeah, some people can, some people can't, but it's just, you know, it's, it's sort of that leveling the playing field. So I just wanted to say, I, I just want to say I tried to learn Morse code and I couldn't. Now, now <laughs> allow me to, allow me to uh, connect all these dots here, right? Look, uh, channel planning with the six gigahertz in the play, right? is literally garbage in, garbage out. Like people see all these big numbers. He said, as soon as I adopt six gigahertz, aha, my bandwidth is going to quadruple and you know we'll have eight times benefits and this and that. What they, many people fail to acknowledge, right? Is that uh, it needs to be configured well, right? 
uh, either you do it by hand, as you rightly mentioned, that you used to do it with cups and this and that, or you re uh, rely on some professional help. And guess what? The professional help is not another IT consultant. You don't need more human intelligence in, in this one. You guys are intelligent enough. Uh, it's all about artificial intelligence because it is, uh, if you see uh, 2.4, 2.5 to 6 gigahertz, right? The channel planning is getting more and more complex. And uh, what happens is tooling it by hand, it's going to uh, literally have you do that every night, so to speak. Now, imagine if AI comes along and says, hey, guys, you relax. I'm going to take a stock of your network every 24 hours. Identify how you need to readjust and give you a ready-made channel plan. And then say, John, I like that you are techni technical. I appreciate your acumen. So do you accept this channel plan? Now that's AI, right? That allows you to get more out of these fancy technologies. And gentlemen, that brings me to the next one, which is uh, network optimization. So I was at Mobile World Congress uh, in Feb, right? many months ago, but in 2023. <laughs> and I asked a simple question. Every time somebody came to my uh, pod to take a demo of uh, Ruckus One and Ruckus Analytics, I would start, if they were technical, I would ask a very simple question. And that is, how often do you optimize or tweak your network, right? So that you know you are getting the best out of it. And half of them laughed at me the way you both do all the time in your podcast. And other half gave a very straight-faced answer, and that is never. We don't touch it if it is not broken now. So what does it mean? You bring all these fancy network elements into your ecosystem, right? And you have no idea whether you are getting the maximum benefit out of it. So you've spent enough. You are maybe happy or just okay with the performance of your network. It barely meets SLAs. You somehow make it happen and then you don't touch it. Now, this is exactly where, and you know why you do it? And I and I played this out and I, and I asked why. And they said, 60 odd percentage of our time goes into keeping the network humming. I'm not going to burn the rest 40 in, so to speak, tweaking the network, optimizing the network. Now, I invite AI here in this use case as well. And they say, okay, what if artificial intelligence? So now let me give you an analogy. Think of it as a 24 by 7 by 365 CT scan of your network, right? So imagine you going to a doctor when you are sick versus the, there's CT scan happening 24 by 7 and they'll tell you uh, there is an opportunity to improve, John, uh, to look slimmer, younger, more burly, right? Things like that. Hey, I know, I know. Look at your ex expression, my friend. But uh, bringing it home is that uh, so much of network resource go unused because of IT's mindset. Don't touch it. Now, if AI were to be at play, it would say, aha, I know how to eke out gains out of these APs or get more bandwidth or reduce the delay or reduce the latency out of your network by tweaking these configuration. Do you accept this change? Right? That's that's music to IT's ears. And that's, what, that's the value that AI brings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm... Uh, I can share with you certain findings, right? Uh, Ruckus AI Analytics, right? The AI engine of Ruckus has shown how you can get more mileage out of your infrastructure because of AI recommendations, right? Yeah, so that's where we're going with that, yeah. Yeah, network optimization is pretty uh, hot and heavy. And uh, I think AI is fitting really well with that one. Now that that another thing associated with this is uh, remember I started by saying that for a long time, uh, if the network was working, there was nobody to measure it. There's nobody to do anything. Suddenly now everybody is taking putting a yardstick next to everything. Right, everything is SLA driven. IT is also hand, held accountable. Right now you don't have uh, any way but to use AI 
to ensure you are picking the right SLAs, you are measuring the right SLAs, you uh, you do certain things with your network as, as an IT. And again, you measure those and say, aha, I know whatever I did improved the network. It didn't go south, right? Keeping it humming is not an answer. Now we are talking about fine tuning it. We are talking about measuring the efficiency of your network. And that focus on SLA is now becoming uh, one of the reasons why everybody is looking very kindly and gently at AI. Yeah, I mean, for me, honestly, I mean, the optimization is nice. Um, as a former network engineer or engineer adjacent type person, I mean, one of the worst things to do, and I mean, I, even as an SE, I'm doing this with customers, right? They spend so much time chasing a problem. And what RA has been able to do, uh, right. and AI and ML in general, it's not even the optimization. It's, which is good, it's you mm -hmm. open up that dashboard and it says you've got these 50 problems. Mm -hmm. And instead of taking two or three hours to fix something, you know right away it's DNS because we all know it's always DNS <laughs> uh, or it's a DHCP server or whatever the case may be. But it, it's trying to help you. It's basically shrinking the size of that haystack and increasing mm -hmm. the size of the needle. And that, yeah. you know, you've talked about saving money and saving energy, and, and I've got some different thoughts on that. I don't know that we can go back to that right now, but I don't even look at it as that. When when people look at uptime as money, mm -hmm. or if you're selling to the customers and the customers can't get on the network and the customers are suffering, it's it's shortening that time to resolution, which is huge. Um, yeah. But to your point, and sort of to address my skepticism, that's the part where we as network engineers, whether it's a CWE or an RCWA or a C, you know, whatever, th we need to review the feedback because at, even even right now with RA, you'll look at that dashboard and there's going to be some things on it that don't require action, action at all to be taken because it bothers the AI engine, but you yes. and I know that it's just normal behavior. It's just, it's, that's what's going to happen. It's okay. You know about it. It's, you know, maybe there's an AP down and that site just had a, a water leak and the APs unplugged, whatever. But that's why that human inter intervention is important. Um, and that's where it's leaning on our expertise, but it frees us up. You're, you're spending less time troubleshooting and it gets you back to that optimization, which is more important, I think. So yeah, definitely so, force multiplier. Uh, yes. Now this should answer your initial skepticism that maybe somebody will AI someday AI will replace you, John. I don't think we are going to get there, right? AI artificial intelligence is meant to augment human intelligence, or it provides human intelligence uh, a, a something of higher value to be pursued, right? Now you can take all the wisdom that you have and use it to create a better universe versus fixing the current one because the AI is fixing the current one. You see where I'm going with it, right? It's not about replacing. It's about freeing up this precious human intelligence to take on uh, projects of uh, greater importance. So you've given us a lot to think about. And if you have time, I'd love to um, have you back for another episode. So if you're down with that. We would love that. As okay. As so discuss. let's, uh, let's, so, I mean, because this is all, I mean, AI really is a lot of stuff. And so um, if you're cool to stick around for, and I'm thinking back to my, when I watched baseball and they have a guest in the booth and the inning goes really fast and they're like, Hey, if you can stick around for another inning, we'll continue this conversation. And, you know, after the commercial break. So um, if you're cool with sticking around, because I, I, I still have so much I want to talk about and ask questions and stuff like that. So if you're cool with sticking around, um, then um, let's let's go ahead and have you back for another episode, and we'll we'll dig more into the Ruckus AI. So, yeah, we can do Ruckus AI. In fact, I'll tell you one thing, right? That we went through all the reasons why now is the time to look at AI kindly in network management. Uh, maybe next time when we are discussing, we keep it razor focused on how Ruckus uh, Analytics, the AI engine, right, is helping our customers right now with many of these and guys i'm very sure that even in the next episode with all these nice funny banter that you've got going we will not be able to unpack all of it but at least we can give it a try awesome
So with that, John, I think we I think we can go ahead and put a bow on this one and then um we'll we'll bring middle back and we'll talk about some more uh stuff about um AI. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir.